We just stepped on their face with a hobnail boot and broke their nose. Fucking dogs. That's what I told them. Hope it doesn't take that long again. Go dogs. What is going on, everybody? It's the 100 Sanford Podcast, live and direct, coming at you as it always does weekly. This is your host, Lamar Lovelace. I will be joined with my co-host George Foster a little bit later, but we have something special for you. If you didn't know, now you know. The 100 Sanford Podcast is also part of Dog Central, which is a community of dog talent and dog information that comes live and direct at you from different angles. Uh, ourselves, My God, a podcast, Dog Stats, Graham Coffee, bringing all of his updated information, John Tweet Sports in Field Street form with recruiting. But this week, we wanted to do something special. We wanted to do a collaboration. We've been looking to do this for a long time. Um, with ourselves and my God, a podcast giving you two different angles, two different perspectives from two different podcasts, bringing you dog information the only way that we can, which is truthful, fun, and just giving you different perspectives from from all over. So, with that being said, we want to remind you: retweet, like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow on YouTube, TikTok, IG, Twitter, and of course, go to our website www.100sanfordpodcast.com and get all your updated information on the dogs. With that being said, hey, I hope you sit back, enjoy, take this bye week, listen to the podcast, and get a couple different perspectives from a couple different angles from two different podcasts. But together, you know what? We are Dog Nation. So let's get into it. If you're listening, you could be listening to this through My Got a Podcast. You could be listening through, to this through 100 Sanford. Uh, thus far, we've got Lamar. And hey, if you're listening to 1 Sanford, maybe you don't even know who I am either. So I'm Jim. <laughs> you just heard John. And we've got Lamar. Lamar, how are you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you guys doing tonight? We are doing excellent. I yeah. have. Uh, I brought this for you, Lamar, because... This it made me proud that I was able to actually like recommend something to someone and they liked it. So yeah. I've got that Maker's Forty Six French. Oak. There you go. Uh, See, I knew I was. I knew we were going to do this collaboration, so I was ready. Yes, I got my. I got my glass. Right. There we go. There we okay. go. I'm doing a little Van Winkle tonight. Oh man! What? No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted, I just wanted to sound so cool on this show with you guys because you guys always bring something special. <laughs> I said, let me look it up. <laughs> well, I brought something special for our special guest, so I brought the special. I, I brought the special reserve. <laughs> oh, now nah, I got a little good. four roses, man. Mm, that's that's, good. that's excellent. I, yeah, I, that's a really good one. I do. I do enjoy that one. Which uh, the the yellow label or which one is it? Yellow, yeah, yellow label. Awesome. Yeah, that's. I think that's 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 the one. I think that's the only one that I have had. I know, John, you've been telling me about some of the other ones. I haven't had those yet. So uh, the yellow label is good. Um, the the one that I really enjoy that John and I have have talked a good bit about um, is the um, small batch select. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I guess for lack of a better description, the brown label. And then there's another step up, the limited edition, which is a clear. Like it's it's like a label that's just printed on the on the glass. Mm. Um, they have small batch, which is I, I personally am not a fan of small batch, but um, it, it it's really harsh for me. But mm. um, small batch select is is a fantastic. It's like a fifty dollar price point bottle. That limited yeah. edition is like almost impossible to find. But interesting. Yeah, you interesting. know, you guys like talk about all these drinks that I can't get because here in Virginia, for whatever reason, there's nothing at the ABC. Nothing. <laughs> I'm like you though, Lamar, because it, it, North Carolina is the same thing. I, I think yeah. it's that like that ABC, everything being centralized, right? Yeah. And you can only go here or there. John has like in Georgia where you can kind of get to know the store owner. Maybe they've got something behind the back or whatever. And like, we yeah. don't have that luxury in the ABC states. So yeah, I, I'm with you. At all. you have to of, like updates or anything like that when they shoot out the little email and say, hey, get here within 20 minutes and the whole batch is going to be here. We, we get that here. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, man. We had okay. Eagle Rare last week, and I go, I go in, and I'm like, "Hey, you guys have Eagle Rare," and they're like, "You just missed it. You just <laughs> missed it like 20 minutes ago." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" 
<laughs> right. Like, oh, we emailed it. We sent the blast out to everybody. And I'm like, really? Oh, really? Man. I just missed it. So I tell I tell you what, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook pages. Um, obviously, if you if you're on the email list for the the liquor stores or whatever, I get uh, Jim and I talk about this. There's a there's a liquor store that since I'm heading to North Carolina this weekend, there's a liquor store called Southern Spirits on the way to uh, on the on the way to Charlotte in South Carolina. It's like just over the border from North Carolina. Um, they have like a, a weekly kind of like giveaway kind of thing, not giveaway, but like, you know what I mean? Like they have like special bottles, like you want, you follow their Instagram page and it's like an Easter egg hunt inside their, inside their liquor store. They hide like special bottles all over the store and everybody's wow. like, you, you see everybody wandering around. It's like, Oh, there's the Pappy. You know what I mean? Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. They'll do that. And they have like an allocated Saturday, like once a month, which I still haven't done yet. Um, but you be, but they, they, you get to like camp out. People like camp out and like line up. And so they put all this stuff out. That's when it, it's not hidden there. Like it's, it's right there. And so there's, yeah, like, you just you know, walk in yeah. two bottles of this, five bottles of that or whatever. People go in and, 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 and eat those up. But yeah, yeah, John, you may have to do that. You will, cause you went last time you were up in Charlotte for soccer, right? Last time Carter was up here. You guys did. We that? did. Yeah, we did do that. That was like in between games. But this time I'm like, yeah, you know what? I just, I got my weller. I'm not, I'm not into the games. I don't want to mess with it. So, um, yeah, I've gotten a little bit jaded. I was talk- talking to John about that today. The, the bourbon game is just so ridiculous, man. It's it's so ridiculous. Like, you can't get a lot of stuff that you could get, like, along, like Eagle Rare. Like, even, like, Eagle Rare is behind the counter here in Georgia. And it's like, come on, man. Like, you either got it or you don't. And, like, the Weller Green label, too. Like, it's, it's fairly re- readily available. So, like... On one hand, like I kind of respect the fact that you just you go to the liquor store and everybody's on the same rules. Allegedly, um, what's on the shelf is on the shelf. But like in mm-hmm. Georgia, like you walk into a store and it's like what's on the shelf is on the shelf. But like there might be some stuff in the back that if you hit someone on the right day or ask the right person that doesn't know enough or, you know, like yeah. if you're John, if you're John and you go to a liquor store that has like a point system where they like are tracking how much money you spend and you can just like roll up into the place that you've been spending money on for 15 years and they they just like yeah yeah come on back here here you want to try some you want to try slot them a twenty yeah exactly like <laughs> it's so mysterious to me like I have never I I'm so new to this world I'm still like learning it, it it's kind of baffling to me but the bourbon world. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like the buying it, the buying yeah. of the bourbon. So, and yeah. I definitely didn't understand it until I watched a documentary that John recommended called Neat. It's on Hulu. Um, mm-hmm. And just, I mean, it makes sense in like the whole like uh, why things are rare, right? Because you're in like a, if you're, if you're drinking like a, a 10, age 10 years or even age seven years or whatever, right? Like they had to decide how much of that to make seven years ago, 10 years ago. And so they're having to <laughs> constantly like project what the demand will be that far out in advance. So that's a lot why it's hard. And we're in this like bourbon boom right now. And, you know, if, you, if you're, you're a 10 age barrel or 10 year age barrel, like that went in 10 years ago. Right. And like, they didn't know yeah. it was going to be like this. So I guess that's one of the issues that distilleries have is trying to figure that kind of stuff out. So what's the reason for the boom? And I, I mean, me personally, I completely went off of beer, anything else. It's all bourbon now. I, I know I just feel better in the morning. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't give me hangovers or headaches or anything like that. So I don't know why there's a big boom for it though. I think ah. it's, I think it's basically like, you know, people went away from like the light beers and things like that. You started seeing like the IPAs and all that stuff getting yeah. popular. And I think it's kind of the same way with bourbon, right? Like people started realizing that they could drink better. Um, but there's also, you know, the, the marketing for it as well. You know, Jim, one of our fraternity brothers, he used to joke like marketing doesn't work. Like, I, like if you tell me, <laughs> if you tell me to buy something, you tell me to buy something, I'm not going to buy it or whatever. But like, I'll, I'll give you for instance, like Yellowstone, like there's, you know, um, yeah. Dutton, the uh, John Dutton was drinking Weller 12. And that mm-hmm. was a product placement that was within, you, you never would have even seen it coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it's that kind of persona. So you got Mad Men was popular for a long time and they were drinking bourbon. Like there's, there's all these different shows like the um, uh, Sopranos, you know, Tony Soprano is like sitting around drinking, drinking whiskey and stuff like that. And so you have a lot of 
cultural factors that are playing into like hyping up the market. And I think that, you know, like you said, you see our, our fraternity brothers, um, Matthew McConaughey, you know, he's, he's fronting, <laughs> he's fronting long branch and you got all these celebrities pushing their own brands and stuff. You got like the rock, you know, with Terramana and right. I think uh, P Diddy was like Ciroc, you know, everybody's got their own little thing that they're, they're pushing. And, um, the bourbon game just kind of became uh it kind of became it kind of became like this big thing in suburban america i feel like works for me yeah i don't i yeah i don't have i'm i'm with you though lamar like for me like the feeling better piece right because i had gone i had gone down that big into that craft beer realm and was drinking a lot of ipas and i i you know a you don't have to drink as much bourbon right and then like b i'm the same, same way as you i feel better um after after that then as opposed to like an ipa and such so jim didn't even drink bourbon until we started this podcast <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story <laughs> season one you like, peer pressure peer pressure it bit. was total peer pressure <laughs> season one like john you would have a bourbon and i'd have like you know a creature comforts or some kind of beer right and then that, fantastic beer finally well, i wasn't it, eating it snacks until you know graham came on ours you know i love that <laughs> <laughs> graham and his snacks man yeah man the snack big time man. snacker. I'm well, excited, snacks, Lamar. You weren't you weren't really a big bourbon drinker during the podcast. So are you gonna be are you gonna be with us the whole time? <laughs> yeah, man. I'll be good. I'll be <laughs> I'll be good. Promise stay, you. You just stay away from the barrel proof. That's what we've learned on that one of your podcasts. The, the barrel the barrel proof can be deadly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, I know so in, in general, right? I mean, we were gearing up for the holidays. And we're between, we don't have a game like right away, not exactly imminent. And we had been talking forever about needing to do this, um, you know, ever since we, we teamed up um, as part of Dog Central together. Um, I, I think we've definitely like, we've all talked a lot more uh, outside of the podcast, you know, been like on the forum and, and texting. And I know like we've learned so much from you guys um you know mm -hmm. how plugged in you are and it's i feel like it is um probably kind of come through on the podcast a little bit too just because like we we i feel like we're more knowledgeable about things because of you lamar and because of trey and everyone involved and, and we got george um it's it's been i don't know it's been a heck of a ride it's been a lot of fun i'm so excited to to do this you know, collaboration episode. Uh, been looking forward to this all week. So, <laughs> me too, man. I've been so excited. I mean, I, I worked today, but I didn't do anything in the office. Man, I hope my boss isn't listening. To <laughs> um, and all, I'm just excited all day. I was like, man, you know, finally some other people on the pod, especially my guys from My God a Podcast. So, um, I was excited to do this. I uh, couldn't wait. Um, I listen to your show every week in the office, by the way, in the <laughs> office. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, man, Dog Central's blowing up, doing good things. And I think as a whole, the community is doing great things. You know, you have Field Street, you got Graham doing what he's doing, Dog Stats, uh, yeah. John Tweet Sports. So everything is doing great with uh, with Dog Central. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 pretty amazing. Like you, you can really just it's kind of choose your own adventure, right? Like <laughs> you guys. You guys and Trey are, are super plugged into the program. Obviously, Dustin and Jason and those guys are big into recruiting. Graham and Dog and Dog Stats are, uh, and Josh, you know, they're they are X's and O's, and Graham's obviously super plugged in too. And then you got George, who's coming in with the alumni and the the guests that you guys have been able to pull on yeah. 100 Sanford is just phenomenal. What you guys have done with with your programming is just amazing. It's it's super awesome to just be around everybody. We're all encouraging each other and supporting each other. It's it's really fun. And then Jim and I are just kind of hanging out, making gifts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, but that's the whole yeah. that's the whole focus of Dog Central, though, right? You know, what I mean, to have a collective community of different pockets of things that people want to listen to. Hell, we had Maurice Claret on last week. Mm -hmm. I never thought we'd get so <laughs> many negative comments about something that he said that was actually positive. I mean, he really, it yeah. was a troll, right? For him saying, you know, George is going to get dusted. I don't even know what he said now. But um, but still, yeah. we had so many people doubt into that. Uh, there's George now coming on. Up. Um, but we had so many people doubt into that episode. And um but it, it brings a different style of listener too, right? Because they want to hear different things. 
They want to hear different things from George. And that and that's what I love about George being on the show because he's able to bring a true understanding of the game. He's able to bring something that none of us are able to do, right? We're not alumni. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, you guys are alums, but football alums, right? We we did not play between the hedges. You know what I mean? We didn't Letterman. play at that at, right, <laughs> yeah. you know? We're, we not, Letterman, play at that we're level. not Letterman Club. <laughs> <laughs> and when you ask him questions and he's able to give you details and, you know, insight on things that normal people would not have access to, it's phenomenal, man. So uh, it, it's been cool. I, I, I've loved the, uh, the journey that we're all on so far. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, having, having George is, is, is amazing. By the way, a fantastic screenshot of George there. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's ready to line up and go, man. <laughs> I think hey, I man, want that jacket, I felt though. Like it. If What's I felt that? Like it, I say if I felt like it. Sorry if my audio isn't what it should be. I'm on the move tonight, uh, moving around. Uh, it's not my usual setup. I don't have my mic on. I'm driving. Uh, that's why y'all can't see my beautiful face in person. Uh, but hopefully you can hear me, man. What's going on, guys? How y'all doing? We're, We're good. Kicking We're kicking it. We're kicking it, man. We love it. What, you, what y'all <laughs> talking about? What y'all talking about? I hope y'all was talking trash about me. No, man. Come on now. <laughs> I, you know what we what you know what we hadn't said yet is you know this is Lamar's first time on my got a podcast. This is George's second time, Lamar. So he's he's one yeah. up one up one up to you there. We had George on season one yeah, talking about right? the goalpost about the goalpost game. Yeah, that was probably like 2020, wasn't it? Were yeah. we in the pandemic already? It was, it was, and that was like uh I mean, that was one of our I mean, George, we were like episode four. Uh George was so nice. Like I sent George a DM, like, hey, would you talk to me about this? And he was like, Okay. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's that's usually how it goes, man. Like if I if I if I feel a good vibe, if I you know if I if you seem credible, you know what I'm saying I don't care. I, I jump on like I I did something today. I did something. I'm, I'm always doing something for somebody. Yeah. If you know if um should I, if I got yesterday, me and Charles Grant did something. You know it, it wasn't quite football related, uh, but he had some new stuff going on. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man, I, I don't mind talking and giving my, whatever I feel like is, you know, true to life knowledge and my perspective on things. Uh, it could be football, it could be anything. Um, I'll jump on and talk about it if I have the time. He's a <laughs> serial like potter, man. That's what he is. <laughs> He's a serial <laughs> potter. I mean, hey. I didn't even realize he was going to be on something today and all of a sudden it popped up on the timeline on Twitter and I'm like, all right. Again, I'm in the office, not doing anything, right, Jim? So I put it on in the background, and here he is. You know, he's with uh, what's what's Ron uh, Johnson. It was, yeah, Ron Johnson, yeah, Ron Johnson. Johnson. He does the Vikings. He covers the Vikings up there. Um, he's a friend of Spice Adams, and I'm a friend of Spice. So he got to know me through Spice, and uh, he reached out to me the other day because I said something about the Lions. You know, and, and they played the Vikings the other day, and. Uh, and I said, sure, you know, since I, you know, I played for the Lions. Uh, uh, and it was a good talk. And they, he surprised me and brought Spice on today. I can't, like, <laughs> it's like I can't, I can't shake old Spice. You know, he, he, he you know, he jumped on. I, when I was talking to a, uh, I was on, uh, on a call with Joe Briggs one day. And he was talking, you know, Joe, Joe Briggs first, uh, uh, with the NFLPA. And he teaches, he's a professor sometimes. And uh, I was talking to his class one day, and here comes Spice jumping on me. His, 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 his Omega frat brother. I was like, I can't shake this guy. <laughs> did Did you play with Spice anywhere, George, or do you just know him from just from the uh, league? Or I, I learned I I first met Spice in the Senior Bowl, so we go back that okay. far. Okay. Um, and so that's that's where I first met Spice, and then uh, you know, years throughout the league, different you know, playing against them and you know, uh, different events and stuff. We got to know each other and got to know each other even more uh, as social media became, you know, bigger as well. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I know Spice. Okay. Yeah, I know you definitely turned me on to him as like a consumer of your social media, George. Like, <laughs> I, I always right. tell people like what a great follow you are. And like, so I don't, like, so I didn't true. know about his social media stuff until you started like retweeting some of the stuff that he 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 does on Twitter, and I can't remember if he was on Vine, which I feel like I have to credit yeah, George he, for like, he did introducing a, he me to did Vine. A little Vine. 
a little violent. Okay. Yeah, he did a little violent stuff. Mike's okay. hilarious. He is a nut. <laughs> <laughs> I love hilarious. spice. So I don't think we had hit record yet. Uh, you know, again, like on my got a podcast, we always say joining the conversation in progress. We were talking about ballers earlier. Um, and he was on that. He had a little <laughs> arc on that show where he was like playing himself. But anyways, I don't know if y'all remember that. <laughs> I don't yeah, remember spice, that. Spice, spice was definitely on there with the rock. Yeah. 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 yeah oh man. With the rock. You know, he's doing, he's doing his thing. And I told him a long time ago that he was going to pop because he was, you know, he was he was basically built for everyone. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He's funny, uh, uh, you know, nice guy. You know, everything he does is clean. Like, it's, it's, it's already mm-hmm. packaged. And, uh, you know, I want to see him take it to the next level. I want to see him all over the TV. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, we, we weren't we weren't talking trash about you, George. No, no, don't worry about that. We, I think right when you hopped on, we were talking about y'all's episode with with Maurice Claret that you just had and some of that, which was awesome, yeah. by the way. I was uh, I don't know. I I had never heard like I know that I knew that he had gotten into public speaking and stuff, but I had not heard any of it really. Um, he's got a, a cool story. Had a lot. I don't know. I I really enjoyed you guys having him on. It was really cool. And I guess the only thing I'll add is that George, I am bummed that you guys didn't get to play against that team back in the day because mm. I really oh, would have loved to mm. have seen I feel, that. I feel, like, if I'm being honest with you, man, I, like nobody could tell me different. I feel like we were peaking at the right time, and I, yeah. I feel like we would have beat anybody. I you know what I mean? I, I just, I just really feel that way. That, that Florida game was kind of a, you know, it was kind of a, a, a fluke, mm-hmm. flukish type game. Um, we shouldn't have lost any games that year. You know, no. I mean, that one game we lost, I feel like it was a fluke. We didn't even lose to one of the better teams we played that year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Florida was, you know, kind of, you know, they weren't that great um, that year, and we ended up letting them get one. Uh, but, yeah, I feel like we would have beat Ohio State or Miami that year. Man, and that would have shut down – that would have shut down a, a whole a whole kind of narrative, right? Yeah, oh, no question. No <laughs> question. Like, it, it, then it took. <laughs> a lot of the trash those three. people talk, a lot of the trash those people talk would be non existent at this point. <laughs> yeah. And the thing about it, what people don't understand is they talk a lot of trash about Georgia. And yeah, they can say, you know, up until, you know, last year, last few years, you know, I, I'll even take it back to appearances that we didn't win and then like in like 20, uh, when was that? 17, 18? Yeah, when, we didn't, when, when we didn't win it. So up until then, you know, all the trash the people would talk would be about, you know, Georgia not being able to, you know, finish the drill or, you know, mm-hmm. win a championship. But mm-hmm. they never talk about how Georgia really, you know, yeah, that may be true, but Georgia's a very, very, very historically solid program. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I went back. I did some counting. I went back, uh, you know, a little while back. Went back about fifty years. You know, Georgia probably has. I think Georgia might have in the last fifty, fifty-two, fifty-three years. Georgia has like ten seasons of under seven wins. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like mm. that's like ten out of the last fifty plus years. Mm-hmm. That's rare. Not, yeah. I don't think I don't think any of the top teams can say that. You know what I mean? They had very highs. You know, a lot of the teams had really high highs. Then they had some really low, really uh, bad lows. Georgia kind of remained, you know, good for lack of a better word. You know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. know, yeah, we, we just we just couldn't get to great some years. But mm-hmm. you know, Georgia never. I I don't recall. You know, especially in in my lifetime, there might be one bad in quotes, Georgia team. And mm-hmm. that's good. You know what I mean? I get to go into every season knowing that I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm going to want, I'm going to want to watch every game. Right. You know what I mean? I, I, bet, <laughs> I guarantee you there are a few Florida fans this year that, you know, didn't quite want to watch every game. It's like, eh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody was in the bed. I can Nobody really wanted to go <laughs> to the game. You know what I mean? They're not talking trash. It's right. like, eh. they're not, they don't quite care. Like, you know, 
I've cared about every Georgia game since I've, you know, since I've been in it. Since you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's always a chance for us to win. I don't think everybody has been able to say that over the years. I was going to say, because, like, I mean, you know, those times you're talking about were, were certainly before you got there, George, uh, you know, before, like, John and I got there to school. I mean, the last time we didn't make a bowl was, I think, 1996. I mean, like, I, I'm pretty sure we, like, we've got the longest active bowl game streak going still, I believe. So, Well, think mm, about yeah. Ohio State. I mean, they talk all the crap that they talk, but it took them 34 years to get to their national championship in 2000. Right. Yeah. I think it was like, what, 1974? It might have been 36 years, something like that. Um, you know, the Maurice Claret, uh, Maurice Claret year. So um, it took them a while. But, uh, yeah. you know, we're here. We're here now. Yeah. We're about to find now. out. We're about yeah, to find man. out, right? <laughs> about to find out. Let's get it on. And, I, 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 and like, it's, it's strictly up to Georgia what, if they want to repeat or not. Man, amen. The, 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 amen. The, remaining, the remaining teams aren't. We just call it what it is. You know, they aren't equipped to beat a Georgia team that's fine on all cylinders. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just not going to – It's for me, it's simple. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of like physics and whatnot. It's like, you, like, the team is better. <laughs> so if the team that's better plays their best ball, you're not going to win. Right. And Georgia is better than all three teams that are – left in it right now and I don't think it's close and hmm. they're you know and the crazy thing I don't think Georgia peaked this season no. you know what I mean they just did what they had to do to win these games and uh, hopefully we're going to see you know in the next you know month or less than a month see this team peak and uh, get another uh, national championship trophy Man, dude, you just made the hair on my neck stand up. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, seriously. So, so Jim, Jim, he put I, into... I, I, speak, I speak with conviction, conviction <laughs> about things that I'm very convicted about. And, you know, if I feel like I'm right, I'm going to speak with conviction on it. And I, I feel like this year they are just better than... They've been better than everyone all year, and mm. they're definitely better than the three teams that are vying for a national championship. Now, it's up to them to go out there and play. You know right. what I mean? You, you t- you're talking about 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 year old that, you know, don't know their left hand from their white, right hand some days. You know what I mean? So anything yeah. can happen. And but, 25. 25 now. <laughs> yeah, 25. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, got, you got a point there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jim, I think I think George I think George just put into alumni like Letterman alumni eloquent words what we've always been saying is that <laughs> yeah. the only team that can beat Georgia is Georgia. You don't turn the ball over, you're probably going to win this game. Yeah, yeah, they just they just play such sound defense that it's hard for teams to score. So it it would take a really really down game for Georgia. You just think about it. You got a you got a team that you know, for the majority of the year, gave up about 10 points a game. Mm-hmm. You're right. going to be hard-pressed to hold Georgia to, uh, to less That's... than 30 points. You know what I mean? And, yeah. they're giving up 10, and they're giving up 10 to everybody, you know what I mean, on average. It's not really, you know, like, it, and it doesn't even matter about stats. Like, yeah, LSU had Six million yards versus us, <laughs> in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, and I'm sure Kirby's super mad about that. Uh, they, yeah, they, they, they're still running. They, you know, you know, they didn't have much rushing the ball, but they had 500 yards passing, and still could only muster up 20 points. Mm-hmm. Like it's 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 just it's demoralizing. It's like you look at you look at that you look at you look at that stat sheet, and you're like, how did we not come up with more than 20 points? Because George mm-hmm. can win however they need to win, you know yeah. whatever whatever the recipe calls for, they you know they got the ingredients in the cabinet, so to speak. So we we need you know, we need George we need George we need George in the locker room for this hype. <laughs> we, need, we need we need him talking to the players like right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, nah, they got it covered, man. It, <laughs> Kirby got Kirby got some of the best pregame speeches you're gonna find. I love, <laughs> I, I, I love I love how that guy brings it. 
Well, you know what's interesting, George, because you talked about the players and, and, you know, we're just better right now. I, I go all the way back to the beginning of the year when Kirby said this was his best staff, period. Mm. I think that outside of anything else allows this team to be better than everybody else in the nation because you mentioned even when they have down games, I think the coaching lifts them up, right? Even if the guys are down and they're injured, the coaching lifts them up. When they give up 5,000 yards and 30 points, the coaching still puts them in a position where they can bend but not break, right? I mean, this has been a, a completely dominant team from the player aspect to the staff aspect to everything. I mean, it's been phenomenal for me. Mm-hmm. And with really? a lot of staff turnover too, right? I yeah. mean, you lose your defensive yeah. coordinator, you lose yeah. your offensive line coach. I mean, you, lose, you know, you lose. wide receivers coach, you lose a lot of guys. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's 22 people that play at a time, and you lost 15 of them in a the draft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, like, it doesn't, like, that's wow. It's mm-hmm. the thing they're back in it, you know what yeah. I mean, the very next year. That's pretty wild because that typically doesn't happen. That's a lot of turnover for – you know, for for a team to lose that 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 many caliber of players, like you just think about to get. You know, I'm very fortunate, and I I understand that being a draft NFL draft pick was like that's you're one of the few people in history to to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And they lost 15 of those caliber <laughs> people, humans that walk the earth. They lost 15 of them. Humans <laughs> that walk the earth. That's absurd. <laughs> they lost 15 humans that could play national mm. football. You and know, guess what? And football. guess what? But, and guess what? They, they've back. got. They've got. They yeah. They're back. They and and the majority of them are are freshmen. They've they've got they've got so and many freshmen taking snaps, man. <laughs> scary, right? No, see, that's that's another thing I wanted to get into before I got off track was about what Lamar said about the coaching staff. To do what they are mm-hmm. doing with this these many young guys is really impressive because you know these guys are you know, like I said they're teenagers. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They're, they're you know they're. I, like I'm a I'm a dad to four teenage girls. They are crazy. <laughs> teenagers, teenagers are nuts, and they got those guys doing what they do. I'm pretty sure they have their moments mm-hmm. where they, you know, teenage knuckleheads and you know and, and and just dumb. But they got them going in the right direction, and they've done it all year, and that's very impressive because they, they're 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 a young team, and it's it's is you know, you don't like to get ahead of yourself, but like, what's a reason why they shouldn't be better next year? Unless they poop the bed at quarterback, you know. Okay. And we don't know, we don't know that. And I don't, yeah. I don't feel like they're gonna poop the bed at quarterback. Those guys have been sent by, you know, all those, all the quarterbacks we'll have next year have been playing, have have been in the system. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So unless, like I said, unless they poop. The bed at quarterback, which I, I don't think will happen. What reason they have to not be better next year with all the all the experience they bring into the uh, twenty three season? Yeah, if no, you that's, look at it, the they one. could actually they could actually be as good on defense as they were last year, next year, which allows you to bend but not break even at quarterback. Even if you had a, a Beck who doesn't play maybe quote unquote as well as Stetson played the last few years. Or even if you went completely young and you went off the reservation, you said, okay, we're going to put Gunner back there. I'm just using the name mm-hmm. out yeah. there. But still, they could, they're, they're going to be so dominant on defense that I think you, they're allowed to make natural mistakes that anybody would make, you know, going into next season. So I, I'm yeah. excited about the whole program right now. Well, I think like one of the phrases I've heard a lot lately is around like it being like playing complimentary football. Right. Mm-hmm. And so like, and that's the thing, like what we saw, like George, what you hit on earlier right, with, with the LSU game, it's like, okay, well they scored points. And then it was like, okay, well now we can do that now too. Right. I mean, they never scored <laughs> like back. They never had back-to-back scores against this, except for the last, the field goal at the end of the first half. And then they scored the first touchdown in the second half. Other than that, we matched them touchdown for like, whatever they scored touchdown, we matched it with a touchdown too. And it was like, that was kind of the concern a couple of years ago ish. It's specifically in 2020, I would say, right. Where it's like, Oh yeah, George's got this great defense, but what happens when the other team can score? And we saw that now, right. I mean, you know, we can win in multiple kinds of ways. And then with all the defensive guys, I'm going to give you a stat, George, like, 
you talk about all the humans <laughs> that left after last year. <laughs> that and, the and earth. We had talked uh, like early on, and I got a podcast like the I don't know, probably like the season preview about like you know the defense could take a step back, right? And like the <laughs> offense is going to take such a step forward that should cover for it. But this defense, on average, uh, against Power Five teams, uh, they are scoring 14 points less against us than they average against other Power Five teams. I mean that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Two crazy. touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Two, You're two touchdowns two in the hole, bro. <laughs> <laughs> It's What's interesting, good. though, when you when you <laughs> watch good. them play, when you watch them play, though, I mean, you can watch our defense play the same defense that another team is playing, mm -hmm. and it's it looks completely different, though. I mean, you're saying to yourself, like, do we have 12 or 13 guys on the field? <laughs> because it looks like, like George always says, like, we're choking teams out, and I don't know what choking it is. <laughs> yeah, man, and, and, and I think Tennessee wide receivers said it best, right, that we were just so physical. The entire game, though. You can't go one or two snaps and be physical and then kind of go back to the sideline. No, we're physical the entire game, continue to choke people out, and then eventually they give up. So uh, it's pretty interesting yeah, to me. The other day, Jeff Schwartz, um, former uh, NFL lineman, uh, does a lot of you know media stuff. Um, he posted one of the Georgia plays. He's also one of the voters for the Joe Moore Award uh, mm -hmm. for a top offensive line in the country. You know, the dogs and, you know, Michigan were finalists. Uh, did they come up with – did they do that already? <laughs> when you mentioned that, I was thinking the same thing, George. I don't know. Yeah. John, we're going to have to anyway, put Anyway, he, he posted a <laughs> clip, and you see, like, they did this um this sweep, man. And you got Big Darnell coming around the corner. Then you had Roseman <laughs> get in there and dig out a guy. And, like, I'm talking about they putting guys in the dirt on the perimeter. Like, the receivers. Like, you – and that that leaks into the whole team. You're not mm -hmm. gonna beat a team that's that physical and that committed to being physical, you know, every play. Like they're committed to it, and you know they're gonna be tough to beat. You know what I mean? Because it's not it's not it's it's rare. You know, so I can see if it was a common thing, you know, then. But it's it's not. It's a rare thing. You know, guys typically perimeter guys don't like to get dirty. Mm. You know what I mean? These yeah. guys, they don't care. They are with it. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> like you look at you look at the offensive line. Like even, you know, even even if you're comparing Michigan's offensive line or whatever, but like we've got blockers all over the field that are not even considered part of that unit. <laughs> we've got an extra tackle in Darnell Washington. Exactly. Right. I mean, geez. Well, it wasn't too long ago that people were saying, you know, add ten or fifteen pounds to him, he'd be a Pro Bowl left tackle, right? So Yeah. George, do you subscribe to that? Is that is that accurate with Darnell? Uh no, I think he's a tight end. You okay. know what I mean? Now if he wanted to, he has the frame, you know what I mean? I assume he has the arm length, you know, he, he has the frame, you know, it you know, he probably could if he wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I think he has a he has a shot to play in the NFL as a tight end, so you know, why not? <laughs> Right. I, I did look it up. It looks like the Joe Moore Award has not been yeah, uh, has not, given out yeah, yet. I was say. <laughs> late, Dece late December is what they said on mm -hmm. their site. So, so they award the Heisman that. Trophy before they award the Joe Moore Award? That's crazy. Right. <laughs> right. Hey, John, that was yeah. a pro segue. They need, they, need to give it, they need to give it to the dog. They need to give it to Georgia this year, though, because I feel like they've, they've been – they've. I think they got screwed uh, at least within the last five years. I, don't think mm -hmm. they've, I think they've had some good lines. I can't remember if it was last year. I know last year, it was the last year or the year before, I feel like they got screwed. So, you know, kind of yeah. like how, you know, they gave the, you know, uh, Brock didn't have the highest, <laughs> you know, stats so, this year, but they, you know, they made amends for last year with, right. the, uh, Mackey, with, with the Mackey Award. So, you know, right. hopefully they do the same with these, with these uh, dog linemen because they deserve it. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. you know, shame on us. We were we were questioning the Stacey Searles, Stacey Searles stuff earlier in the year, right? Well, John and I, you, not you guys. Understand. Like that, there was <laughs> there was reason because the guys, yeah. you know, they weren't playing up their potential. Yeah, you got to wonder. Okay, is it is it the leader? Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. <clears throat> you know, Searles has a good track record. You know what I mean? But you just wondered if you know if he was you know doing what he was supposed to do. In, in regards to this this unit this year, and uh, 
he's I, I got to give it to him, man. He's got them guys playing in good ball. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, man. On the on the way home, I was thinking the same thing about Cyril's. They're playing. They're playing. They're playing good ball, man. Really good ball. I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of that unit. You know, and you know they got some pups behind. You know the guys that could t- that can uh, potentially leave this year. You know what I mean. I hate to yeah. see guys go, but you know the name of the game is to pay them bills, and uh, them bills, them bills is coming, Jack. So why not get a great job <laughs> like playing offensive line in the NFL? So, <laughs> you know, if, we lose, if we if we lose if we lose if we if we lose some guys, you know we got some we got some guys to you know, to make up for him. George, I, George, as, as the, as the resident, as the resident big man uh, on, on the call right now, I'm going to go ahead and apologize to all of the University of Georgia offensive linemen and staff, because I was giving them hell earlier this season. <laughs> <laughs> and Graham, and Graham, you and Graham have helped educate me a little bit on some of this, like as to why, like I felt the way that I felt. And it sounds like that, Based on what we've seen, and I haven't, I'm not a, I'm not an X's and O's guys, and the, the gap in the, uh, what was the, the gap in zone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, it seemed like that we've kind of figured that out. And to his credit, you know, I, I told Jim after one of the games, I think it was the, was it the Tennessee game, Jim? That mm-hmm. I was at? Yeah, Tennessee. I saw my, my wife and I were there and we were hanging out, we were hanging out uh, and we were just, kind of hanging out after the game and I I was walking across Sanford and I happened to see Cyril's and BMAC walking out into that recruit area, the little landing area up there on Sanford. And I saw him with some folks and I was like, Hey, Stacy, go dogs. And I told Jim, I was like, I should have said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all are killing it right now. <laughs> oh man. Well, and I think too, like, um, Another thing that I, that I wanted to hit on, George, with you, because I, I w- want to get your thoughts on this around, and it's around like rotating, right? Because, and also like, uh, uh, I don't know, rotating and then also recruiting and even re recruiting, right? Because last mm. offseason, we had Amarius Mims in the portal, right? We thought he was going to be gone. Um, he ends up staying. He's here in Georgia and he hasn't been a starter, but he's been, he's been rotating. And then, you know, we have McClendon go down in the SEC championship game. And you know, hopefully he's okay. We're, that's still kind of up in the air, it sounds like. But like to have Mims have that experience throughout the year and be able to step right in. And I know you like experienced that. I think probably both ways, right? Because I know like you had your your hand injury your senior year. Um, and I remember when we talked before you talking about um, the way you and Jonas used to rotate. And like I think like. Jonas would be left tackle like when you were younger, and then like you'd come in, you'd play left tackle, and Jonas would slide to the guard stuff like that. Yeah. So. I don't know. Like we talk about it all the time, me and Jonas. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? He he always brings it up because he's you know if you if you know Jonas, Jonas loves to talk and get animated, <laughs> and he talks. He always talks about the time you know you know when I had to come in and he would use his, he said his, his, his Jonas voice. He scoot over juice, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, like, like it, it's, it's stuff like that. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. You have to be you have to be willing to. Back up, you have to be ready to come in the game and, and play the best ball because you don't want to be the drop off. Mm. You don't want to be the reason the team stalls. You know, you never want to be that. Mm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed. John, do you want to hit your your late breaking or, or what just happened? We have some real real time. So I guess Uh-oh. official news or something official. I'm not. I'm, I'm not worried about the Big Ten, man. Big okay. Ten, you go pound sand. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the news? UCLA basically uh, got a rubber stamped approval. Cal is not going to challenge them moving to the Big Ten. So sounds like UCLA no. is going to be part of the Big Ten now. Oh, nobody cares. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's why. That's why I'm like, they're still like, not going to yeah, win. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's just you know, yeah. it's a money play. Yeah. Yeah, Jim, we can edit that can. part out. No, that's okay. That's okay. We'll do it. <laughs> that gave us some good banter. Gave I will say, uh, I do want to go back to something that y'all said. Since I don't know where we're going to go from here, if we're going to talk about Heisman or what, but uh, I will say y'all are talking about like some of these guys don't want to talk uh, leading up on the game. And it's something that I'll give you guys, like every time y'all have some of these these cats on that are 
from opposing teams, right? Like Joe Hamilton, Maurice Claret are the two that come to mind most recently. Most everybody have given y'all score predictions, right? Those two didn't give you any score predictions. It's almost like <laughs> it's almost like your guests are learning. That they can't give. <laughs> they're not going to give score predictions. And that to me, that to me is just like the the icing on the this season's cake is that we are demoralizing people to the point where their <laughs> illustrious stars do not want to give a score prediction because they know what's going to happen, bro. Well, John, you know what's we're gonna, funny we're gonna, about we're gonna, that? We're going gonna to give – we're, gonna, we're not going to hold against Maurice yet. He said, <laughs> he, said he, he said he'll give his prediction later. Yeah, he did. We're going to hold him okay. to it. You know what I mean? Joe, Joe knew what was up. <laughs> 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 you don't want to – you don't want to – you don't want to – like you knew your team was going to get pounded. You're like the best player. You know, it's like Calvin Johnson being Joe Hamilton. Like you're the best player – that oh. that they ever had, and you can't mm. go against your squad like that. So uh, for we, sure, we yeah, for sure, because yeah. that would have been kind of awkward. Well, the teams <laughs> that thought that the teams that thought they had a chance actually gave a prediction, right? Mm. Yeah, Ramon yeah. Foster with Tennessee. Bikes. You had Ryan Bikes. Clark with with LSU, right? They they really mm. thought that they had a shot. So that's mm-hmm. the reason why Takeo, they gave. Takeo even gave us a, a score. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm that saying. was Takeo, that, Yeah. Yeah, but you know that's family. We that's knew, the only we knew that we knew that you knew we knew that was gonna go to. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I I I feed off of that though because I'm feeling that I'm feeling that myself. Like I told Jim, like I've got Jim's like you need to get better friends, but I've got a, <laughs> uh, I've got an I've got a, a plethora of folks. I live like you know, I live at Marietta, which is Georgia country, right? But right. I know a lot of folks that are from other areas and. You know, we had Cincinnati guy talking trash last year, and mm-hmm. even he's been he's been quiet as a mouse ever since then. Um, <laughs> but I've got Ohio State folks, even my my Michigan buddy that I've been friends with for years, and he's even he's not responding to any of the texts that I'm sending. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to poke the bear. I'm trying to get <laughs> some kind of energy going because I think that we both know what's going to happen. We've been talking about it for weeks. It's like, man, the writing's on the wall, dude. Like, it's going to be us in the final, like, period, end of story. And you better be ready because there's going to be some trash talking coming. John, well, I think it oh, goes yeah. back to what, what George already said. These, You know, it's it's already forewritten. We know what's going to happen. These guys know what's going to happen. Right. And I think that when it really comes down to it, let's put it this way. If we weren't as good as what we are, how open and honest would you guys really be with your fan mm. base? With our listeners, would you actually say ah, George is going to lose this game, or I'll pick a loss? I mean, would mm. you do it? Listen, we're we're in a good <laughs> spot, and like and like I said, I mentioned the last fifty years, we're in a good spot to. I'm in a. We've been in a fortunate spot as to where my truth can line up. You know what I mean? Georgia mm. has yeah. been. They've had enough talent to beat everybody, whether they did it or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I have I've had no issue over the last twenty years, you know, saying, Okay, Georgia can win this game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which so I don't have to I don't have to I don't have to make fake, you know, <laughs> predictions, you know, <laughs> that I don't believe that I don't believe in. So which I so we're lucky in that regard. We need, we need to get you uh to to get that through to your former teammate, uh David Pollock, George. But that's okay. <laughs> Although he picks us now, he does usually pick us now. He does. Now, he does. Pick now, he, has, he has to. He has to be. A, he has to do a little. He has to be politicking. A little He's got a politic. You know. <laughs> you know. He he has to. He has to do it a little. A little bit different. I, I did learn yeah. that about yeah. television. You know, I've, mm. I've done some television and and done some television training. Like, mm. like he. You know, he he has to do that. You know. Got I mean? it. Okay. But he but he gives mm. he gives his honest opinion though. You know he, you know. You know he's pretty. He's pretty good at, you know, what he does. You know what I mean. So you know, I don't. I don't feel too bad about it when he when he doesn't, you know, straight up just boost us. Right. I, I would fair. say. I would say that we've been we've been pretty honest. Uh, I mean, we lived through the Cheney year, right? Like we we, we lived through the Coley year, right? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. We, Jim Jim and I like. I know that we've. Like I said, I I apologize. I'll eat my crow. Like I was super questionable about the offensive line. I told Jim earlier this season I was super concerned about our ability to get a yard when we needed one. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I was I was concerned about our short yardage game, but that has changed 
in the last three, four games. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not super concerning to this point. And mm-hmm. I think there's some elements that like, you know, there's stuff that we're holding back or whatever, but like, I'll go. I mean, I, Jim, we talked. We're hyping up Stetson. We're on the Stetson train. But like, there was there was a time when we were questioning, like, what was going on, dude? Like, we were questioning it. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, we I try to I try to be real, even though we we started this podcast in the literally the golden era of George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John. Let me let me tell you this. It's it's pretty interesting because this was before we started our uh, 100 Sanford podcast. I happened to run into Jim Cheney. And we were talking. Mm. And this was before the national championship. Okay. And he says to me, I said, Coach, you know, um, you know, what, what's your thoughts on the team? And he said, This is the best team that I've ever seen. And I was like, Yeah, right. Come on. <laughs> he said, he said, if they don't win a national championship this year, they'll never win a championship. He said, and then they're gonna go on a run. He told mm. me that before the national championship last year, before the season even started. Mm, and wow. he said, it doesn't even matter who's at quarterback. I was like, mm. wow. So, I, I mean, agree. it goes to show you, yeah, man. I mean, some of these, you know, you got to apologize to some of these guys. They know exactly what they, you know, what they what they need to know. So Yeah, I'll say, so in the, so this is the third season we've, we've been doing this. Uh, neither of us have ever picked Georgia to lose a game, but also think about the last three seasons <laughs> too, right? I mean, yeah, you know, they, they haven't had really many losses really, anyway. You don't really have cause to pick Georgia <laughs> to lose. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You, you, jump, you jumped on at a great time. <laughs> <laughs> you've been, you've, you've, you've been easy potted you know what right? i mean Business hey. is booming. Hey. You, haven't, hey. you, haven't had, you haven't had the pod you know in, in 97 i was waiting for it i was waiting for it hey to, to george's point like what he's saying jim is that we just need we just need kirby to just stay around forever yeah <laughs> yeah man yeah, yeah. It'll if work. Kirby's we we have a we have a saying, man, like and I've got the gift. Like mm-hmm. in Kirby we trust. There's a text message that we have, Jim and I have with some folks that, you know, in Kirby we trust. And I I find myself going back to that. Anytime we're questioning stuff, Jim's like, but yeah, but John, like Kirby's the coach. And it's like, yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I yeah. agree hundred percent. Trust him to figure it out. Yep. Um I guess uh just trying to think of what else we got a bunch of things that we kind of, I think wanted to hit on. Um, I'll go to, the, we mentioned the Heisman. Like, do you guys think, do you think they got it right? Uh, Cause so I know like at least our podcast, you guys are the same, right? I think last time yeah. we both had an episode, we knew the finalists, but we didn't know who, who won any, any mm-hmm. grievances from anyone. They probably picked the right guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think they picked the right guy given the context. I think that, like I said before, like they they picked the Heisman before they picked the best offensive line unit in the country. Mm-hmm. I think they're seriously doing they're they're seriously doing the guys that haven't played as tough of a schedule throughout the season. They're doing them a dis- disservice when you've got guys that have played tougher schedules. Like to me, like you shouldn't give you shouldn't give the best player in the country award until the end of the season. That's just my right. take. Yeah. 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 Uh, William, Williams was spectacular, though. I mean, well, he had spectacular plays. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. I think if you really look at consistency, you're probably going to go more towards Stetson. You're going to go more towards Max Dugan. I think he was very consistent throughout the year. But Williams was that splash guy, right? I mean, heck, yeah. if he doesn't get hurt, do they beat Utah? <clears throat> yeah, Maybe. that's a fair question. You know what I mean? So, And then yeah. he has yeah. the Heisman moment. But I think what really helped him even more was that he's got the busted finger – I think he, personally, I, I think he didn't come out of the game because of the Heisman. They wanted mm-hmm. him to win the Heisman. You know, right. he's hobbling all over the field, all that. He's the tough, gritty guy, you know. So, mm-hmm. but I mean, he played well throughout the year and he, and he elevated a program that was down. So you got to give it to him. Yeah. I also think that it's hard to, it's hard to really gauge this award in this day and age, particularly with teams like Georgia. Like, I mean, we, we, we joked about it, but like, look at mm-hmm. Stetson's, look at Stetson's stats against like the, the Power Five teams. Look yeah. at, look at how many snaps he's taken in the second half. You know, you got guys like Hooker that are out there, like, just bombing, you know, Vandy, you know, in the fourth quarter when they're up big, you know, like, these guys that are just piling on stats when, you know, Stetson's like, you know, he's he's having a smoke, he's he's having a dip, <laughs> in the, he's having a dip in the fourth quarter, you know, like, I, I don't know. I just, 
it's it's hard for me to it's hard for me to swallow because in my opinion, like Stetson's Heisman moments are about to about to come. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I, I feel I feel like he's gonna play really good in uh, in these playoffs. He's gonna make a statement against Ohio State. Let me tell you that. A little well, little spo- spoiler alert for the for the for the, the Ohio State preview. Well, and he's got the controlled weather environments, right? Like I feel like that's where he excels, man. <laughs> exactly. He, he's excelled when he's played, you know, in Mercedes Benz, the national championship game, uh, the Orange Bowl, right? So I'm I'm excited to see more of that for sure. I think that's fair. That makes sense. You gotta I, deliver I that milk, man. Can't spoil. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> can't, can't spoil. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I do think all, all right. like the whole like should he be there or whatever that all ended up being kind of much ado about nothing when you saw like with the final. I mean, it was a runaway for Caleb Williams. Like I feel like that yeah. all that was all yeah. just kind of weird posturing, I guess. Uh, but I got to say that it's it's funny to see the Tennessee folks freak out about it though. It was funny. It was funny. They got funny. issues over there, man. They yeah. got issues. Complete issues. Yeah. Um, we got a couple of things. I I don't want to end on this, so I did want to I did want to hit on this, but we definitely wanted to just say, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers, condolences to Mississippi State, to the Mike Leach family, uh, losing Mike Leach this week. Um, he's been a constant figure on this podcast somehow, even though you know we don't play them much, but we played <laughs> Mississippi State in our first season, and uh, we dug up the clip of when he was a uh, he had like a cameo on Friday Night Lights. Um, and where he was talking to coach Taylor, who, uh, that actor, by the way, uh, Kyle Chandler went to Georgia, by the way, if anyone didn't know that. Um, but so we, we had dug that up. We talked about that. And so we're always talking about, you know, um, his, his quirks and everything. So, you know, rest in peace to, to coach Leach. Uh, and I mean, and a, an offensive innovator, right? I mean, that offense is all over the place now, um, really at, or elements of it at every level, really. So, I'm curious if George, George, do you have any interactions with, uh, have you had any interactions in your recruitment or in your, your, the, the guys that you coached with or like, or um, that you coached, that played with that were coaches that might've been in his, his branches? Uh, not that I can think of, I probably, mm-hmm. uh, in hindsight, I probably go back and look at where he, where he was. Um, I probably know some guys, uh, but I didn't, I didn't know him. I didn't know him personally. Uh, just a sad situation, you know, that, it, you know, happened so abruptly, you know, um, I pray for his family and friends. Uh, that sucks. You know what I mean? I, mm, uh, yeah. I lost, I lost my little brother on Christmas day a few years ago mm. and it's not fun on the holidays to, you know, lose your loved mm. one. So, you know, so, so, you know, I, you know, lift that family up, man. I know it's tough. Mm. Man, mm. yeah, definitely. Oh, thanks for that's that. True, George. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the thing that the thing that's been amazing to me is just how amazing the Twitter community is. Like, there's a lot of sh- a lot of shtick and a lot of stigma around like how awful Twitter can be from a political standpoint. Mm. But like, yeah. the this is this. If you're a college football fan, like you probably have people that are retweeting or connected and sharing and. I mean, it's just amazing to me because like some of the dog fans that are like somehow gathering some of these links from people that I don't follow. I don't follow some of these writers and on the West Coast or whatever, but Mm -hmm. they're sharing all these anecdotes about Leech. And it's just so amazing. I didn't hear I I didn't hear any of these stories when he was, you know, when he was alive and you know, to a certain extent, it's a little sad because you, 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 I mean, uh, he sounds like by, by and large, like we always kind of thought he was a great guy. He was a little quirky, but like <laughs> everything that, everything that I'm reading is just how good of a dude, generally, generally just a good dude and a good person, a good human being yeah. he was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm hearing the same thing, John. I was, it's funny because you say that I was thinking the same thing about how, how magnificent, quite honestly, sports can be mm. and how, you know, we, we come together, we have these podcasts, right? We have shows, we have fans, we're on Twitter, Instagram and everything else. But when there are things that happen, things that happen off script, so to speak, how the yeah, community does come together, script. you know what I mean? Like there's no hate, mm. you know, we don't, there's no hate mail or anything like that coming from different people, but everybody's really trying to lift up mississippi state lift up the family mm-hmm. and like you mentioned i mean heck i was driving into work in in this morning all they're doing is is talking about mike leach and all the the different stories about him and and when you really think about it 
he was he truly was in the pocket of where he should be, right? Where he could really mm. express who he was. I couldn't see him at a major university, mm. only because I think they would muffle him, right? I think we got the best <laughs> right. sound bites because he was mm. at a Mississippi State. He can control the narrative. Mm. Washington, right. he can control the narrative. Washington State it brings the it brings the attention that they probably want. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, Ole Miss has the attention with Lane and. You know, the you're in the, you're in the West Perfect. and you're in the shadow of the LSU program, the Alabama program. He probably made it interesting to watch Mississippi State versus uh, on the field. You know, with some of his offenses and off the field with you know some of his things at the podium. Yeah, but yeah, guys, sure. I got to jump off. It was good to get on with you guys. We got to do this again. This I like this vibe. <laughs> 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 We, we, we gotta do we gotta do this again, man. But y'all y'all be nice to Lamar when I jump over here, man. And uh, you know, hold it down, Lamar. I got Love you, it. boss. Yeah, you, you about to say something, John? Uh, I was just gonna say thanks, George. I, I think I'm gonna put that on my resume, by the way. So yeah, <laughs> seriously, seriously. George Foster right. asked George Foster asked to do this again. <laughs> good. Right. Good. Good. good stuff, man. Awesome, thanks, right, George. Boss. Uh, be good, George. Right now. Uh, too good. Too good. Man, he, George George cracks me up. Yeah, man. He's always got me laughing. I mean I tell you what, it, man, George is the coolest George is the coolest UJ football alumni out there. Cause I'll tell you, like we, we run this podcast and I, I'm a little envious of some of the guests that y'all have been able to pull because of his <laughs> his contacts and, and your contacts. Like I've reached out. We've reached out to folks, and like, sometimes we don't get a peep, man. But George is just George just jumps right in, man. Both feet. You know what, yeah. though, I, I so will cool. tell you this. I'll tell you this. We are in the golden era, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think a lot of people are more willing to stick their neck out there and talk about it, or come on a podcast. Or I think people are just, you know, the energy, the the vibe, everything is good right now around the university, around the program. I mean, heck, I reached out to Josh Brooks, and I didn't think he was going to come on the show last year, but he did. You know, he was like, hey, yeah, yeah I'll come on. And, you know, he's been a friend of the program ever since. So yeah, um, it's just a matter of hitting it, you know, hitting it right at the right time. But, you well, know, hey, 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 anybody, George- let me know. George said yeah to it. Yes, it was because he said he liked our vibe. So, again, <laughs> yeah. on the resume. Go ahead, <laughs> on the resume. <laughs> on the resume. Oh, man. Um, well, you guys want to hit – well, there's a couple of things I think we wanted to hit on, like, news-wise. But I also want to, if you're okay with Lamar, delve into a little bit about, like, what we were talking about a while ago when we we're when I said – had the uh, should we be recording moment. <laughs> hey, man, wherever we want to go with it. I'm cool. Um, which, which I think, John, was your show. question. Right, which was like, or maybe it was a statement of like, "Holy cow, Lamar, you are like so plugged in," and like how impressed we are with that stuff. So, I don't know, man. Just like let's let's let, let's let's start it this way. We, we can segue into that. Let's. Let, okay. It's my fa- it's my favorite question, Lamar. Mm. Mm. What is your Georgia story? What's your connection? Like, how are you? You know that we're alumni. You know how we are. Yeah. Like, what's your story? What's Bro, your Georgia story? My family is from Lagrange, Georgia. That's my story. You know, it, okay. it's interesting that um, my whole life growing up, I knew all my family roots were in Georgia, and I will be a hundred percent transparent and honest. I hated it <laughs> because we went on a we went on a family trip one time from up north, came down, and 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 I told my youngest son the other day, we stopped at this restaurant, and the lady says, "What do you you know?" She goes. Want baby potato fire? And I said, "What? <laughs> baby potato fire?" And I was like, "What is she saying, Daddy?" And I was little, oh, and my dad man. says, "She's saying, do you want baked potato or fries, son?" You know, I was trying oh, to get used gosh. to the accent, right? Because I had never yeah. been down here, so I hated it from that point on, right? <laughs> but then you know, you don't sound like, like you're from the Grange. I'll give you no nah, man, right? <laughs> so then I got I got deeper into my family roots, and it was like. Georgia just kept calling me, man. You know, I mean, my dad, he's a, he's actually a Pitt alum. My wife is a Pitt alum. Uh, sister and brothers are Pitt alum. Um, it, it's crazy. And, you know, I went to a state school up in Pittsburgh, and then I went to Purdue for my master's. But I just kept – Georgia just kept calling me. So I just kept following the team and following the team. And, you know, it's always been in my blood. So uh, – but, yeah, family roots are LaGrange, Georgia. We have some family land there. And the great-grandfather ended up moving the family up north buying land up north and you know starting the same thing up in uh, right outside of pittsburgh so 
that's my that's my tie-in with uh with Georgia and uh that's awesome where yeah. where where outside of Pittsburgh are you in terms of like the family are you downtown, are you downtown? like where are you at in Pittsburgh no out in Pittsburgh we were in Murraysville <laughs> slash Penn Hills area quite honestly you know what's funny okay. is that we just offered Cephas Dante Cephas you know a, a scholarship to transfer from uh, Kent State he's from my old high school in Penn Hills um, but yeah, we have family land up, up outside of uh, Pittsburgh. It's called Leechburg. It's, it's actually called Lo- Lovelace Hill because we have so much land up there. So it's a bunch of family members who live up there, and um, we didn't live there. We lived outside of the the city there. But um, hmm. but yeah, right outside of Pittsburgh. That's funny. So um, I have clients. I have clients in Greensburg. Yeah, man, that's right beside Murraysville. I yeah, exactly I was about to say, do you know Smale Automotive Group? I mean, yeah, totally yeah, awesome. I do. <laughs> so. So Smale Automotive Group, like the Smale family, like they've been clients of ours for like 10 years plus. Like, mm-hmm. anyway, they, that, that I, I inherited the account, but um, the guy that runs the marketing there, I, I work with, but I've been there multiple times. Like I went to Oakmont, Oakmont yeah. for some, some of their like charity events and stuff. The country and club, have- Oakmont country club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they had uh, the the next one that they were going to do. They haven't done it since COVID, but the next one that they were going to do, I I talked to the marketing guy about playing Oakmont. Yeah. Um, the next time, the next time, <laughs> next time I go up there, I'm, I'm going to play Oakmont. I'll I'll hit you nice. up next time I'm up there. <laughs> nice, bro. Nice. Yeah, that's a good that's a good place, man. My dad he used to work for Westinghouse back in the day, and he had a. Uh, he had, you know, carte blanche to get into Oakmont anytime he wanted to because Westinghouse and their ties. Um, but I never got a chance to play it. Mm. it. It's it's very tough. And now I got this herniated disc. I can't golf the way I used to golf, but it would be nice to play it. But but heck, I'll be your caddy. <laughs> nice. I'll, 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 I'll let you know. I'll drink you can... the bourbon and you can you can swing the sticks, right? <laughs> let me tell you something. I I've been to I've been to some places like that down here down south in like Augusta, you know, down yeah. Like that is that is old old money, man. Yeah, it is. That right? is that is a the, you you literally walk in the walk in the building and you can feel it in the air. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's thick, right? <laughs> it's thick. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's a good place though, man. It's it's a uh, it's a prestigious course. Um, the area is nice, you know. Like you said, old money. Even all around Oakmont, it's old money, man. You know. It's, yeah, it's not. It's not like at Augusta, but yeah. no, no, it's not Augusta. <laughs> it's definitely not Augusta, but it yeah, it's still old money. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know. I uh, I I lived in Lagrange very briefly, Lamar, when mm-hmm. I was younger. So not that I know your family was gone at that point, but well, you know uh, what's sad ways. about it is that when you come up twenty. You know, mm-hmm. I would tell my kids all the time because we lived in Houston. So I'd drive back through Atlanta and mm-hmm. go up north, right? I would say, do you see this, you know, this land right here? And I think, mm-hmm. what is it, the Kia plant is over there? Mm-hmm. Some of our land was the Kia plant. Like uh, some it. of our family did not pay taxes on the land. So they lost some of the land. So there's still some family that are there. Gotcha. Um, I heard wow. through the grapevine. I'm not sure. I mean, this could be <laughs> another plug. <laughs> and Nick Chubb is related, um, but I, I've been trying to reach out to him, but Nick doesn't hit me back. You know, I don't know. Mm. I'm like you guys. Nobody hits me back, you know, whenever I need them. But, you know, we'll see. Chubb. We'll see what happens eventually. Chubb is a man so, of few herbs. Man yeah, of few words. right. Right. <laughs> I have to, you know, I got to find somebody to reach out to him. But, yeah, I got I got a lot of family still there. It- Okay. If there were people, if there are people that did not have Twitter, like I would think Chubb would be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's facts on that one. Well, that was like his <laughs> locker room joke, right? Like he, someone, <laughs> when he was still at Georgia, someone was making fun of him in the locker room about like not having Instagram, and he was yeah. like, and his and his response was like, "You ever seen an ad for a Lamborghini?" He's like, "Exactly." Not advertise. <laughs> <laughs> that's rare these days, man. Everybody wants some shine, so you know when yeah. you find a guy that's that humble. Just does his job. I mean, it's amazing, right? I'll yeah. tell you, I've seen a lot of ads for Lamborghinis. I yes. have Lamb- <laughs> I have I have Lamborghini. I've got I've got McLaren clients, bro. Uh, nice, yeah. nice. You, you must be rolling around with Trey. <laughs> no, I'm not rolling around with Trey. You know, we joke we joke about that. Trey's not here, but like right. you know, he I, I, I wanted I was part of me wanted to him to hop on so I could chop it up with him about some of the some of the automotive 
on emotion yeah. cuz well he, he still works. owes people hellcats so he's he's like in hiding <laughs> he told everybody you know as long as we're in the natty he's giving free hellcats to everybody oh. it's like trade now all of a sudden he disappears it's like chirps you know oh. he but, was uh, solidly he was solidly in the henny on that one <laughs> the, that's one of the best uses of that like uh like frame this tweet or whatever yeah. or make this a quote <laughs> with trace face it's, it's every time i see it, every time i see it oh. it's like I feel like that, like Sarah McLaughlin's got to be on. Like, <laughs> I know he hates Dustin for that, man, because I think <laughs> Dustin created. It. Yes, hey, he he yes. threw himself into it. He put it on the chat, like with sixty or seventy people. We win. I'm giving everybody else. Yes. <laughs> so. I think they stopped producing them, right? I think they're they're stopping this year. They're about to stop. Okay. I'm yeah. I'm bummed because I actually like so the Challenger was, uh, which I don't know. I am not like a car buff or anything, but. Um, is it because is that the Challenger, the Hellcat, or the Charger? Because I I know they have like, Charger. Okay, the Charger. It's okay. the Charger, yeah. Okay, yeah. but I think like aren't they stopping on both of them? Um, I know they're not gonna make the Challenger anymore for sure. I think I think next year is the last year. Um, I always wanted one of those ever when they came out, but I don't I don't have anything remotely like that. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I just think local. I'll be honest in the automotive space. Um, the 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 Stellant it's it's now called Stellantis but like the FCA brand is kind of like it's kind of like the the noisy neighbor or whatever like the mm. it's kind of like the little annoying pest so yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's it wouldn't surprise me and nobody really pays attention to it to be honest with you so like gotcha. I don't know it, it it's not gonna matter like they're in trouble the Stellantis is in trouble. So, so I guess Lamar, you hear the the family roots calling you, and you get into, you get into, uh, I don't know, you all feel Georgia pulling, you become this big fan. But then, how do you, yeah. how do you then like, because I feel like you are, I mean, just like through like networking and meeting people, like you're so plugged in, like you're you're a fan, but you're like so knowledgeable and like have all this this information. I, I don't Didn't, know. I guess just like not 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 an alumni, right? <laughs> nah, you know, you know what's funny is that. A lot of people want to talk to these players and everything. I talk to family members. Mm -hmm. And and usually I talk to like a lot of uh, family members of recruits prior to them getting to Georgia. Mm -hmm. I mean, heck, I probably got a lot of them already on speed now, you know, mm -hmm. that I can talk to and and, and, and so forth. And, and not only that, since I have a younger son who plays, uh, well, heck, he's only playing flag football now, but he loves football. I mean, he's insatiable. He's been coming in the room like 30 times since we've been on the show. Um, <laughs> Does he like Carter? Does he want to just get on and like say hello or say something? No, he doesn't really want to come on, but it's, it's more or less like, okay, daddy, who do you have on tonight? <laughs> like when we had Champ Bailey on, I was like, and he plays DB, you know, he was like, I said, buddy, this is Champ Bailey. I mean, like, bro, you got to get him on. You got to get right? him on. You know, let him, let him like, this is hello. The dude. <laughs> well, I don't know where he's at. He's probably out in the hallway playing. Well, football. tonight he's like, I don't, I don't care about these guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, but really that's my, not a tie in, but it, mm -hmm. it's something that's similar, you know what I mean? Cause I, I know that one day he's going to be one of those kids that recruits or recruiters are looking at. I mean, he's that good already. Um, mm -hmm. One of my buddies is Joe, uh, Joe Moorhead, who's the coach up at Akron who was at Mississippi State, obviously, um, before Mike Leach, and, and also at, at Oregon, you know, he saw my son's tape, and he's like, uh, yeah, he's doing some rare stuff already. So just, you know, <laughs> keep him, keep him, you know, in line with what he's supposed to be doing. So when I talk to parents, you know, I'm talking about things like, you know, how'd you get your kids started? And then we just start regular conversations. And, and so that kind of plugs me in with from that angle. Um but just reaching out, you know, like uh, we mentioned before, uh, you know, uh, Josh Brooks, who's a friend of the program, all I did was was text him and say, hey, congratulations on the AD job. And, you know, I think you're going to do a bang out job. And here he is messaging me back, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's, I think it's just being real. You know, it's being mm -hmm. open and honest with these guys. And, and I think that they respect the fact that I'm not going to go out there and bash them, bash the university, bash any of the players, you know, anything like that. So, I don't yeah. know. Uh, just happens. Yeah. Well, I remember Definitely. like I think it was man, I think I'm getting this right. One of your first episodes of 100 Sanford fairly early on, you guys had Chris Milton on pretty early yeah. on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I remember that. That was um father you know, of ballers. Father and it was ballers, the same thing, right? right? That was before yeah. Kendall signed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was me and Chris were just chopping it up and I said, "Hey, I, I like your kid. I think he's a good ball player. How did he get to this particular level?" Mm -hmm. And then we just started chopping it up, you know, and yeah. Again, speed dial, you know, another one of those guys that 
um, I could talk to whenever I need. And we haven't talked. There's things that we've talked about that haven't been about football. It's just been about life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so and I think when you when you're open and you're sincere with people just about, hey, you know, let's just live. And this is a community of football, but there's other things outside of football. People trust you. And and um, I trust them, quite honestly, more than anything. Man, which, br which brings me to something else, quite honestly. I Ooh. mean, it was like Todd McShay, right? I know mm. we were going to talk about this later. It kind of pissed me off. Yeah. Where he comes out and he says something bad about Jalen Carter. Mm. What? Did yeah. I miss this? You guys seen this? Oh, man. Oh, no, I, I haven't seen it. Oh, yeah, God, that's breaking I, news. Breaking news. Am I, I going to be angry? I've, I've, been at, I've been at kids' parties at school all day. You yeah. you are you are gonna be angry. Um, yeah. Oh Jesus! So you can watch the video. So John John tweet sports. Shout out John tweet sports. Uh, another guy, Doug Central. He, he actually posted the video. So initially, I saw like someone had posted like a graphic with like a picture, and it said Todd McShay has said this, but I didn't see like a link or anything. John put the video out there. So it was like a segment on ESPN, and he like multiple times said something to the effect of the concern about Jalen Carter is character issues, which like. You know, all of dog dog Twitter and yeah. nation is like, what? <laughs> what is he talking about? How how have I missed this? Golly, yeah. dude! Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just another it's just another opportunity to drop my f around and find out gif. <laughs> 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 I love I love I love when you have guests on, by the way, Lamar, so that I can always have a, a reason to drop that on a game week because I just inject it into my veins. <laughs> No, you know, I mean, when I saw that, I got ticked off. And the reason why I got ticked off is because mm -hmm. truly, I think he's a kid that's misunderstood. He, he's he's focused. He's been that way since since his freshman year, right? Mm -hmm. Completely focused. Um, he's dialed in. And not only that, he marches to the beat of his own drum. We had a chance last year. Um, this is when NIL was first popping off to really mm -hmm. contact him and his mom, and his mom is like a kind of, a, quote, unquote, like a manager, but she's a fantastic lady, mm -hmm. you know, and I think since they have everything buttoned up, people assume that it's like, okay, he's, he's got a, he's got an edge, an extra edge to him, or he's not, you know, completely dialed in with the program, or he doesn't associate with everybody. Well, no, that's your perception, because he's completely buttoned up and has, his, you know, has narrow focus on what his goals are and his goals are to get to the NFL. The family's goals are to get to the NFL. So you can't just, yeah. you know, say that the kid's got a, he's got character issues because he's down. And not only that, they show the video of the, you know, I guess the warmups against uh, Vanderbilt. Was it Vanderbilt that he did that with? Uh, it was Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. yeah where he's yeah. like basically telling those guys like, <laughs> guess who's coming? I am, you know, it's a freight <laughs> train coming at you. I mean, right. that happens. Guys always get into it. I mean, that's not a big deal. So why why say a kid has, you know, character issues before, right before he's about to be drafted? I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. why create that narrative? So it really pissed me off. I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Well, yeah, I feel dude. like it was weird coming from. I'm, him. I'm already, I'm already, I'm already furious, and I haven't <laughs> even seen it. If Lamar is mad about it and he's yeah. brought it up already, like, yeah, I'm because angry. there's no reason for it, John. You know what I'm saying? Like, let the dude, let, if, yeah. if there's a narrative that he's a bad kid or a bad egg, let it play out. It where was the same that? thing with like, George where? Pickens, right? You what know, what I mean, his... I'm from Pittsburgh. Well, all right, all right. All right. So uh, I love, I love Pickens. Just mm -hmm. period, period, end of story. But like, there were, there were incidents. That yeah. led to that narrative. Yeah, what facts. incidents has Jalen Carter exactly. ever, ever? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it doesn't. Nothing. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't it, make it, sense. It's the kind of thing where, like, to I'm, me, I'm like, like, I'm like, I'm like, want to punch someone right now. I'm so angry. <laughs> well, like sometimes things come out, and it's like a team, like, is a team doing this to try to get him to drop to come to them, yeah. kind of thing. But like. It, not that that's okay, right? Where, like, where's I'm his allegiance? Like the, like is this is he an Ohio State guy? <laughs> right, yeah, but, it, but it's, yeah. Like, it's like, what's the why or whatever? And, like, why would Todd McShay do that? I mean, and he said yeah. something along the lines of, like, I'm getting this out ahead of you because this is going to come up, and now you guys are hearing it from me first kind of deal. I was like, whatever, man. Like, I don't. And it made me think, you know, okay, what, the, what has he heard? Mm -hmm. Has someone told him? some information off the cuff that nobody else has heard, right? I mean, I think we're all pretty doubted. And Dog Central as a whole was pretty doubted. And we've never heard anything like that about Jalen Carter or anybody on the pro in the program, quite honestly. Yeah. Um, so where do you get that information from? Uh, I think it just kind of upset me. Yeah. I mean, I think that Missouri thing is the closest thing you can come to anything. But That's like it. you said, I mean, that was like 
I mean, quick, a, a one-off thing that we had never seen before, haven't seen since. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I mean, because you know Kirby and company told him, hey, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, uh, yeah, that, I, that was like and, super out of left field. For and me. if you go back to that Missouri game, it was more or less Missouri guys that were kind of prompting that behavior because they kept kind of – you know, kind of baiting it, you know, baiting the, the shark. And I don't know why you're going to put blood into the water. You know, he's going to come after you and he's going to bite you. I mean, it's yeah, just who he is. Yeah, it, it was Heinrich, very, very weird. Yeah, Heinrich Shea, he's, he's, he's from the north, man. He went to Richmond. He's from <laughs> he went to Richmond. I can't wait till he comes back around here. I'm in Richmond. So if he comes back <laughs> around here, I got him. You know? He's from he's from Massachusetts. Like, he's a damn Yankee. Hey, 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 watch it, John. <laughs> Easy, John. You're from LaGrange, bro. You're from LaGrange. Yeah, family, the blood is from LaGrange, no doubt about it. You know, Where were you born? No about it. What's that? Where were you born? I was born in Pittsburgh. You're born in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I was born family, in Pittsburgh. Had our, family had already gone to Pittsburgh. Family had already moved, man. Yeah. Great grandfather had already taken everybody, bought a whole bunch of land, created some other businesses in Pittsburgh. So got everybody's it, got there. It, got it. Okay. My okay. blood, the blood from the ground, the blood from <laughs> yeah. the ground. Yeah. Was, and it screams, Georgia. There you go. Yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Uh, I love it. I love it. There are there are exceptions. There are exceptions now. <laughs> hey, I, I, you know, I, I, I lived up there briefly. I lived up there briefly. I, I was outside of Philadelphia. So, Lamar, you know, you definitely don't like that. I'm sure. But no, I got that. You know what? With half the family went to Pittsburgh. The other, uh, all some of the other boys went down to uh, to Philadelphia. Okay. I don't. Maybe. I don't know why they didn't want to do like the family business. My my great grandfather mm-hmm. had like uh, he had bars. He had uh, some. You know, did like farming things like that. Mm-hmm. They wanted to get into the steel mills. So half went oh. to Pittsburgh. The other half went to Levittown, right outside of Philadelphia. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Man. Um. The Loveless Clan. Yeah, man. We get in the history. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and Wyclef Lovelace, he is related, but distant. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to get him on the pod. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. What, um, Lamar, I, I did want to get your thoughts on, because we're, we're a week out um, mm-hmm. from early signing day being, it's, it's, it's next Wednesday. It's December 21st. Um, yeah. And I guess like I'll make my comment and I guess you can react. Cause like for me, I, I missed the February signing day, like early signing day <laughs> sounded like a great idea when it was being yeah. floated. And it was like, you know, kids are done with high school, let them go ahead and sign and don't have, you know, no more contacts. They don't have to worry about anything for the rest of their high school career. They can enroll early, et cetera. But yeah. like the way it started to pan out and now like the, what used to be signing day is now like kind of a non-event. Um, and then like, maybe it's also selfishness of like, we're always in this hunt. Like we're in this playoff <laughs> talk right now. And like, this is yeah. a distraction in the middle of, you know, playoff preparation. So yeah. I, I don't know. What are your, what are your thoughts on it? How do you feel about it? Mixed emotions. Yeah. I, I like it from this standpoint. We are who we are right now. So it helps us. Mm. Right. So if we weren't in the playoff hunt, would we be getting some of the five stars that we're getting? Mm-hmm. Because they would never know. We wouldn't be getting some of the high four stars, right? They right. wouldn't be able to say to themselves, well, that's a program that I want to go to because they're winning. There's other programs that could say that. But at the very same time, with the portal now being opened, mm-hmm. I don't know how much I like it. it, it it's it's a weird dynamic. Uh, the portal was kind of upset the apple card, so to speak. I mean, right now, there are spots being held open, not only by Georgia, but, but, but by other programs. Because they don't know, do we take this, this wide receiver transfer? Do we take this quarterback transfer? It's kind of upset that apple card. Mm. Um, But let's look at it from this angle as well. Most of our guys that have come in early have been prepared to play. If you come in in February, if you sign in February, you're not coming in until June to start your, your, you know, your college career. These guys have already gotten two weeks of practice or they'll get two weeks of practice in, in, in tow once they sign. You know, they'll be able to see how things operate. They'll be able to get the playbook. They'll be able to see how Kirby and the culture move. That's a benefit to a team like Georgia. To other teams, it may not be because they're not practicing. Um, right. I don't know. It's it's a mixed dynamic of what you like and what you don't like. But it is exciting. You know, I think it used to be exciting in February <laughs> when you – you know what I mean? Like, it yeah. was like opening a Christmas gift. Now it's like, okay, I snuck right. in the mom's closet – I figure out I'm going to get the GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip, but you know, is it really exciting when I open it up on Christmas Day? I don't know. I mean, that's the way it is right now. Right? So, um, I don't know. Tomatoes, tomatoes. It depends on what you like, and it depends on how it benefits you as a program. But 
I think for Georgia, it's definitely benefiting because everybody mm-hmm. sees how dominant they are. They want to be in that mix. They want to be one of those players that, that sign early. They get, mm-hmm. Do they get a ring if they sign early? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. I would. No, I would have not. to think no. I, would I mean, they're officially no. really part of the program. They're practicing, right? They get. I mean, I know they get the gear. They probably get the Peach Bowl gear, gear yeah. the national title right. gear. But um, yeah, that's part of the stick, though, right? Like that's yeah. part of the why. Like the teams, like Georgia's got a lot of guys that are that are early enrolling, right? Like, hey, I'm going. I'm I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a, lot of, a lot of that. A lot of that. A lot of that is so that they don't get recruited over, right? Like, yeah. They don't yeah. por- they don't get portaled over. Yeah, and I think that to like and John, you know, John to his like business profession, like he's he works in he works in these companies that are startups and things like that that are, um, you know, culture driven and and yeah. and, the, and and young thriving organizations that are like moving like flying by the seat of your pants and technology. There has to be a good culture in order for that momentum to continue, and it's very mm-hmm. similar to what Kirby has built. Um, he's very, very focused on culture, and I heard um, I can't remember who it was. I, I was listening to something. They were talking about like, you know, the, the the Georgians of the world. They're not taking they're not taking transfers and things like that. But like, ultimately, like alluding to the fact that. They're they're not the SEC schools that are that are storied, that are established, that are the Kirby Smarts and the Nick Sabins of the world. I mean, I would even go so far to say as like the the Brian Kellys. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head, but like, you know, they're 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 recruiting certain pers they're recruiting certain like pers personas mm-hmm. that you may you may be able to go take a bag, you may be able. to You're killing me every time. <laughs> Sorry, to edit that out, Jim. They're, oh, okay. they're they're recruiting they're recruiting these people. You know, they they may be able to go to a uh, a lower tier school and catch a bag, yeah. but if you want to come to Georgia, you want to compete for championships. Like that also has value, and it's very much. The, I mean, it's exactly the same in the corporate world, man. There yeah. are companies that just have a. There are companies that just have a reputation for, hey, you want to come here? You can come here. We're not going to pay you nearly as much as what you can make somewhere else. But after you leave here, you can make whatever you want. You can write your own check. You can, you can like, if you, if you work for Google, if you worked for Apple back in the day, you worked for Coca-Cola here in Atlanta, you worked for Home Depot here in Atlanta, um, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Chick Fil A, good gracious! Yeah. If you get through that recruiting process, I've been <laughs> through it. It sucks. Uh, shout out to anybody that wants to hire me at Chick Fil A. <laughs> <laughs> um, but listen, like, th- th- there's value that comes with a name on a resume, and if you come to Georgia, like, there's a statement that you're making to the world that, hey. I'm legit. I've been through. I've got the best coaches in the world. I've got the best process in the world. I've got the best resources in the world. Alabama is the same thing, man. Like maybe it's on the, I mean, there's definitely like cracks in the armor over there. Right. But like Mm -hmm. there's, there's value in where you go. And so if, if you can do that, like there's, 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 if you, if you want to be the best, you gotta, you gotta go where the best are. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think that's, I mean, that, that's a selling point. And that's how we've made, like, how we've flourished in that realm. I think, Lamar, my issue is like, I tend to be a victim of, of nostalgia. I should probably get over it since we're in, like, these are the good old days right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind man. of thing. But like, I, but it's, it is the like, the, oh, I just remember, like, I mean, not even that his, he, he ended up transferring, but like Isaiah Crowell holding up the bulldog. Like, I don't know, like just like the things like that, like on national yeah. sign day in February, like stick out in my mind. And like, I just remember like the, like in Athens, everyone would go to the blind pig tavern. Right. And like you, like that was the place to be on signing day or whatever. And like that, like Nash, the signing day kind of like national holiday for college football fans, I feel like is gone now. Um, yeah. And maybe that shouldn't really matter, I guess. And, and also, Jim, Jim just wants Jim just wants the fax machine running. He wants the camera <laughs> on the fax machine. That's he right. wants he wants the fax machine. Hold on, can I see the name? What name is that? What is that? Uh, the well, I think the problem has really been social media, right? I mean, yeah. I think we would still have that even with an early signing day. 
we would have that that you know opening up a new gift on Christmas Day type thing if we didn't have social media. But now, I mean, everybody yeah. displays where they're going. Um, they give their hints. Um, they have to have a video done by Trey. They have to have you know Georgia put out a video about the kids coming. Kirby has to say go you know go dogs. It used to be back in the day you didn't get that right. I mean, you just showed up on on signing day and all of a sudden you figured out who was coming to your school. Right. I think the times just changed and you know we just got to kind of move with it. Yeah. Shout out shout out to TT Seven Productions, not a sponsor yet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awesome. Shout out to Trey. Shout out to Trey. And That's my right. guy Mitch Pike. Mitch, he does Mitch, our, Mitch is good, dude. Yeah, Mitch man, is he does all our, the boys. Yeah, he he does all of our graphic edits, man. He's um he's been phenomenal for us. Nice. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you guys want to hit any of the other things. I think we had a couple of small things, but um, you guys want to hit on that? We because I mean, I mean, we can wrap it, Keller. If we're winding down. Man, I can literally do this all night, man. Well, I could too. I'm trying to be respectful of Lamar's time. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, wifey just came through and yeah. the son just came down the hall and he's like, okay, are we going to throw a football down the hallway or whatever? Yeah. Um, so I got a few minutes, but yeah, I mean, um, I could do this all day, every day. I mean, it's just what I do, man. I love that. Well, I think the big, I think the biggest regret is that we've waited so long to do this. I, I will yeah, I gotta tell right? you, Lamar, John has sent me some like direct text just to me, like, we have got it. Why? How have we not had Lamar? Like, how have we not done this yet? <laughs> I was like, Man, right, you guys are right. welcome anytime to come on anytime at all. I mean, it's not like, you know, I feel like it's more the merrier, especially mm-hmm. since, you know, we're all part of dogs, you know, dog central. Um, yeah. But I think that you get so many collective ideas and thoughts when you have different minds and look at they look at the game from different angles. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's funny because I mean, some of the things that John's even been talking about today, I mean, I was literally driving to work thinking about the same things, right? Yeah. The things that we brought up about, you know, Mike Leach. I was thinking about those driving to work. Stacey yeah. Searles. I was thinking about driving <laughs> to work. I mean, I was like, I was pissed off at Stacey Searles halfway through the season. George mm-hmm. had to calm me down. And but now when you, <laughs> really, I mean, he really did. Yeah. But when you look at what they're doing now, it's like, man, you know, just let the process play out. Um, yeah. but you yeah. know, when you have uh when you have guys like us that can get together, it's it's natural therapy, right? Yeah. Let's get together sure. after the let's get together after the Peach Bowl and just do a recap everybody. Like you know, <laughs> I we, agree. We, we I in my opinion, like the more the merrier, like you said, like we can do our own recap episode and then after like we let's just do like let's just cherish this, man, because we've only got a handful of games left. Like let's yeah. just stretch it out, like eke it out. Like I'll 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 take all the squeeze I can get out of all of us, man. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Awesome. Well, I know. So, uh, programming note. So, for my guy, the podcast on on our side, we'll definitely have uh, an Ohio State, you know, Peach Bowl preview coming up. Lamar, if you're listening for on the 100 Sanford side, I mean, you guys are pretty consistent Thursday, Friday, right? Yeah. Every week, Likewise. I know you got. I'm sure you've got um, all all those the weekly cadence still lined up. Assuming, yeah, assuming am I correct? Not to put words in your mouth, Lamar. No, no, you're 100 percent correct. Uh, you know, I think we're gonna have we may have Maurice Clet Clorette back on, mm-hmm. uh, but we'll have somebody on. You know, we'll we'll definitely preview the Ohio State game, and and after that, you know, whether it's TCU, whether it's Michigan, whoever it may be, we're gonna we're gonna preview that as well and and kind of dig deeper into it. But it's been nice to kind of have a couple weeks off, though, <laughs> right? You know, what I mean, just kind of yeah, 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 breathe a little bit after this big time season. Um, but it's it's been phenomenal. It's been a phenomenal ride. Meanwhile, you have meanwhile you have Carter, who's like, "Where's all the episodes? I need to <laughs> get on something. Can I get on something?" So if you if you're if you're a my guy the podcast listener, you got Carter. You got the Carter Chronicles <laughs> waiting on you. <laughs> my son, like Lamar, that's what I say. Like if you give if you give that boy an, an inch, he'll probably take a mile. Because my son, like once once he came on, he's like, okay. <laughs> Okay. And What's then, my next experience? Well, it's Logan, funny. Logan Booker, Logan Booker, bless his heart, is just like fed the beast. <laughs> <laughs> I started doing videos for him. Trey got me started on this. But uh, I started doing like little videos and cut-ups of, of his games and whatnot. And uh, he loves it. After every game, he's like, Dad, did you do my video yet? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> calm down. He's like, okay, I want this music. I want this, you know, this this look. And I'm like, are you? serious i mean he's only eight you know what i mean but um <laughs> you got an instagram yeah, page loves it. not specifically for him no i got my own but uh even on tiktok i'll put a couple of his videos up and um i started yeah, 
I started a, a so a, a lot of so Carter plays elite level soccer, nice. um, and so a lot of the friends that he has that we play on some of these teams, they have their own Instagram pages. So I would encourage you to start posting on on his own page, even though he may not have access to it. And yeah, Carter yeah. Carter definitely doesn't. But like, <laughs> I just I just I keep all that stuff there. Otherwise, my my content feed at one point my content feed was like all Carter, and I was like, what the what am I doing here? Like, I need to, <laughs> The best is when John accidentally sends me an Instagram <laughs> DM for Carter's account and not his. I'm like, why yes. is Carter sending me DMs on Instagram? <laughs> okay, here's an interesting note. You guys always do like fun facts on your show. See, I listen all here the time. Here we go, here we go. Um, you, you talk about elite level soccer. Well, one, I guess Richmond is huge for soccer. I mean, we have the strikers. Oh, for sure, dude. Place. Virginia. Um, UVA. Yeah. UVA is, huge. I mean, yeah. Syracuse well, just won the national championship. That's right. So you talk about UVA. One of my teammates that played uh, with me in basketball um, in All Stars and, and camps and whatnot was Eddie Pope, the uh, Eddie US, Pope. Yeah, yes. yeah, USA uh, defenseman. I, I, I've been trying to reach out to him. I can't get a hold of him, but I just wanted to bring him on just to talk about soccer, even though you know, bro, I, it has nothing to do with Georgia. <laughs> but let's still, get British. Just bring him on. Look, we can do that in the off season. Let's get British yeah. Bulldog on. We can get like our own Jim. Jim. Jim's like nightmare scenario is that we, <laughs> me and British Bulldog start a Manchester United podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, that, that, that's awesome. Yeah, that's man, awesome, that's, man. I remember Pope. him. I remember him. I, I threw him an alley oop, right? And you know he could jump out the gym. And I was like, man, you know, I where are you going? It. I believe it. Yeah, man. I said, where are you going? You, said, you know, where are you headed to? Because we had a bunch of different guys from different places that were uh, playing in our in our uh, camp. He goes, believe it or not, I'm really I'm really good at soccer. And I looked at yeah. him. I'm like, I've never even met a black dude who plays soccer. You know, I'm from Pittsburgh. <laughs> what are you talking about? You're good at soccer, man. We don't play soccer. Dude, he, right? was the, he was the he was the he yeah, was he's a monster. He's he was a, a beast. Yeah, he was a monster. And uh, and we I didn't believe about- him. Yeah. We talk about this. All right. So you just what you just described, like tell, we're completely we're completely effing off the rails, Jim. <laughs> but like like you talk about that, but like people people joke about like, you know, you said he was he, he was basketball. Was it basketball? Yeah, it was you? basketball. Okay. Yeah, he played. So he played, the, played. the context the context that you have of him is is basketball, right? Yeah. And a lot of these football players, you know, they're really good at basketball too. Well, mm-hmm. There's a lot of basketball players that are really good at other sports, and there's yeah. a lot of soccer soccer players that are really good at other sports. And there's uh, there's like this undercurrent. I saw it today actually. Um, like, hey, like let's maybe just like silence the the chatter of what happens if the U.S.'s best athletes like they made some mm-hmm. comments about how yeah. Luka Modric would not be an elite athlete in the United States, and I'm like, hold up, timeout, like, <laughs> like. I I disagree with that statement. Yeah, because, totally disagree. Because you've got guys like in the in the in the NBA, like literally that were like some of the greatest of all times that yeah. would be that would be fantastic midfielders, that would be fantastic wingers. Like if we had our best athletes in the United States playing soccer, like we would be yeah. we would be much, much further along than what we are right now. And so yeah. Like I, I totally, I totally agree. Like Eddie, like can you say like, oh wait, what you play soccer? Like, yeah, no, dude. Yeah, I mean that was years ago. Obviously, I'm dating myself, but still, I mean, I, <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, there's no flipping way. And he was, you know, I, I can't remember where Eddie grew up, whether it was Virginia or it was uh, Maryland. But um, he said no, bro. He said I'm probably, you know, I'm gonna go on and play soccer i'm like why are you even here then he's like well you know i gotta out you know i gotta weigh my options you know whatever it may be but yeah he was phenomenal and and i agree with you i think if some of our best athletes decided to play soccer heck my son's getting into soccer again this this summer you know he did it when he was back in houston when we were there um but covid kind of upset that but he's getting back into it now uh i think it helps with footwork i think it helps with speed agility you know hand-eye coordination all that good stuff and i think our our athletes would really dominate if if they really decided to to get into soccer, don't let so, me go off on my multi sport athlete rant, Lamar, because that so, that is my one thing. Like I, so much specialization, right? Yeah, like, yeah. you don't get to play everything like you did when we were kids. But true, I true. am I I am gonna go off on a little bit of a rant on this, <laughs> but um, I, I'll tell you. So a lot of a lot of the alumni that I know that are were Letterman, like I know some guys that played back when we were in school. 
Mm -hmm. And they won't let their kids play. They won't let their kids play football until they get physically to a point where they feel like that they are ready to play because of the toll that football takes. Like you said, your kids in flag football. Yeah. That to me is great. Like some of the feedback that I've gotten from some of the players is that soccer is actually like a better training facility for football later in life because of the spatial recognition that you have to have in mm-hmm. order to get get in behind get in behind defenders to physically run down the field and make those cuts and make those accelerations and short cuts and short bursts and things like that um i'll 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 i'll, I'll give you if you, i think I, I think i texted it to you but I'll, I'll put it out in the podcast form but there's a there's a documentary that is called good rivals on amazon prime everybody's got amazon right so go go and check it out it is a fantastic documentary on the united states versus mexico rivalry and if you listen to it it's a it's a documentary on the rivalry of the united states mexico um you know soccer rivalry which is fantastic and it talks about geopolitical all those same all those kinds types of things but one of the biggest things that i benefited from was just how young the game of soccer is in the United States. Because you listen to what happened in the documentary, and it's like, holy shit. Like, this game has really only been taken seriously by people that have money and power to make things happen since 1986. I was five years old at that time. (laughs) I... Uh, wasn't even part of the vision for what that would take to make this thing seriously. Yes. Carter, Carter, my son and your son, Lamar, and our kids' kids are solidly in what would be the vision for what that might look like to get to the point. And think about how long it's taken UGA to get where we are in football Mm-hmm. to be at the dominant level you there's a the, there's a joke that tony waller used to say on on bulldog blog was there's a difference between being committed to winning and being financially committed to winning the united states of america yeah. is now financially committed to winning and what you're seeing is progressive like advancement in that regard. yeah yeah, yeah. and, and, and well that's see- what it took that's what it took in georgia Right. Yeah. Too. I mean, it's, exactly. it's not. It's not just Kirby. It's Kirby plus that. So yeah. it's, been a, it's Kirby it's plus the change. commitment. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Nice. Great. All right, Lamar. This has been awesome, man. I appreciate. Yeah, man, appreciate you. Great. Always. Um, shout out to George. George Foster also for for hopping on for a bit. Uh, always fun to talk to him. It was a blast. Um, and you know, I, I thought maybe we could do a bit of a, a, a mashup. So I'm going to kick this off. I kind of wanted to close out with go dogs and see you at 100 Sanford. <laughs> see you at 100 Sanford. <laughs> go dogs. See you I love at 100 it. I love Sanford. It. Uh, wait, wait, you got to say what George says. All right now. <laughs> All right now. <laughs> oh, love it. Thank you for listening to the 100 Sanford Podcast. Tune in weekly to hear fresh content from the 100 Sanford Podcast every Thursday, but also with some pop-up shows every now and then as news breaks. You can also follow the content on our website, www.100sanfordpodcast.com, and email us at dogs at 100sanfordpodcast.com. Lastly, reach out to us on social media streams. For Twitter, it's at 100 Sanford, but on IG, TikTok, Facebook, and other accounts, it's 100 Sanford Podcast. All right, folks, that's it. And as usual, see you at 100 Sanford.